during your time here with the Lakers, uh, Robert, and even now, I'm sure that when you still walk around LA, uh, I mean, during these days, and the Latin American fan base still comes up to you and, and show their appreciation to you and love. And, and how, do you, how do you think that you were able to connect with them during that time and still now? You know, it's it's something about the, the 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 Latin American fan base. They're some of the best fan base ever when it comes to supporting the team. I, I think about when it started out with me in Houston. We had a great fan base. When I got to the Lakers, it was something extraordinary. And I, I tell you this about the Laker fan base and the Latin fan base. They always support. They come out and represent. You talking about people who buy the gear, who who always on your side, who have your back. It's the Latin America fan base. I, you know, that's right. That's the only reason I like going to Vegas because <laughs> I don't ever have to, you know, buy anything because those like those fans always buy me stuff because they say, I remember that shot you did against Sacramento. Okay, and then we go from there. But it, it's it's been a you know, they've been a great fan base. Think about it, the Laker brand is one of the brands in all of sports that is so fantastic. And when you have a backing like the Latin American community, it, it, it makes it that much better. Robert, do you know any Spanish at all? Any words at all? Do you ever try using them at all? See, sí. sí. <laughs> I don't. I, you know, it's funny. It's like my 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 wife is Mexican, and she's always trying to teach me stuff. And all I all I know is uh, is uh, hola. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Como está? <laughs> oh no, no, not bad at all. What about the kids? Do they do they? Uh, do you have how many kids do you have? Uh, she and I have a son together. Yes. Okay. He, he, he speaks he speaks Spanish. How old is yeah, he now? Yeah. 15. Oh wow. So yeah. he does he speaks Spanish. That's great. And how, how do you feel Spanish, when you yeah. hear them both connecting in, in uh, Spanish? I, I just nod my head and keep walking, man, because you know I don't know what they talk about. So I, some of the stuff I'm picking up on, I'm not gonna lie, I'm picking up on it because when they try to talk bad about me, I'm they. I know what you're saying. I got what you're saying. <laughs> so what about the food? What kind of food do you like? Is there a specific Latin America food? I know there's LA has great, great food, but specifically um, Latin America. You know, um, I, I love um, some chicken enchiladas. Um, oh, some chicken nice. enchiladas. But the thing is, I, I, I don't like refried beans. I love refried black beans. Uh, it's okay. this place that does that. I love black beans. And so... But you know the best thing about it is margaritas, man. Come on, let's be real. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know we have the Taco Tuesday, but hey, it's all about the margaritas. Oh, margaritas! <laughs> hey, hey, Kobe, Kobe Bryant was able to make that connection so easily. I mean, we know uh, when he first arrived to the Lakers, and he recognized that fan base, and you talked about that, and he promised them that he was going to talk to them in Spanish to learn Spanish, and he did, like. You know how 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 great was that to see and uh, were you able to see that during that time the way that he evolved to them? Yes, you know it, it, it's it's funny because you know his his wife is Mexican and his daughters are mixed like and so we had that kind of connection and for him to go out and learn Spanish it's, and it, here's a funny story um I don't know, I, um equipment guy at the time was he was uh, Mexican his name was Rudy uh, Garcia Duenas. And I told him that I wanted to learn how to speak Spanish. So I used to sit in the back of the plane with him and he tried to teach me. So one day I come in the locker room, he had went, went and wrote all the Spanish words and put it on the TV, the trash can. Everything had Spanish words on it. He's like, you guys need to learn how to speak Spanish. And so I'm doing this because Robert said to do it. He, everybody looked at me like, really? I was like, yeah, we need to learn how to speak Spanish. We in LA. And that lasted about a week because it got so frustrating because he couldn't roll your R's right, you couldn't pronounce stuff right. I was like, man, I give up. So <laughs> I tried, man, but I just couldn't learn it, man. I don't have the, the smarts to learn Spanish. So, but my son does and my wife speaks it. So, you know, but Kobe, Kobe was one of those type of people that if you told him he couldn't do something or if he challenged himself to do something, it was going to get done. So for him to be able to speak Spanish and Italian and all the other languages he did was, was you know, a credit to his greatness. It's, how much how much of Kobe's legacy do you see around the league now with the whole Mamba mentality and everything that that surrounded him? I think it, it's it's starting to be one of those things that everybody is you know dedicating their their game, um, their swag, everything to him. There's so many guys who are repping him by having a, a tattoo to to represent him and what he stood for for this game and. And it, and it's so weird that 
I, I had a chance to play with him and get to know him and and watch him develop from a pup to a grown dog. You know what I mean? So when I say that, I mean that in the most respectful way, because you have to have a lot of dog in you when you play. And what I mean by that, you had to be nasty on the court. You had to have no fear. You have to growl at people sometimes. You know, you have to do all these things to establish yourself. And I think that's what he did as he went through this, you know, his, his maturation stage from a pup that it is literally, if you know how active puppies are and they're running around, that's how Kobe was. And he was just so active running around and he had to learn how to hone that in and then focus it the right way. And, and that's just what it is. And he was, and he was one of those big dogs. When I say one of those big dogs you run from when he got on the court. And that, that was just a joy to have that have him on my side and to watch him, you know, as he went through his whole career. During practice, I'm sure a lot happens, and I witness it. But uh, sometimes it's so <laughs> intimate. Sometimes that we don't, we don't as media, we don't get to see that. But I'm sure you have plenty of stories to go around. Did you ever play Kobe one on one? Do you? Was there a moment that you remember him the most that that you witnessed during practice? You know, we were we were always, you know, challenging each other in practice, and there were so many times that he would. Uh, want to play this game? It's called, it's called a string game, and what you have to do if you you make one, that's one. You make two, you got two on three on. So he will always want to do that with us when we're shooting threes. He will always be one of the first ones out, and he used to get so mad that you know he'll go, he'll come to practice the next day, two hours early, working on threes, and then he was like, okay, we're gonna play, and he'll lose again. And then the next day, you know, as we saw him getting better, we were messing with him like, no, nah, we're not playing today. And he would get so frustrated. Come on, we're going to play. Because he didn't want to lose. He wanted to challenge us and beat us because it was me, B. Shaw, Rick, Fish, and sometimes Kurt Ramerson doing it. He will always be one of the first guys out. It used to frustrate him. And we just used to laugh and, you know, have fun with him. But he he was he was a competitive – his competitive nature wanted him to get out there and beat us in the three games. So that was, that was, his, that was his goal. And look at him now. He's, you know – He's an all-time leading Laker in three-pointers three pointers made. 